Hello and welcome. This is Columbia Basin Research's first video in a multi-part series on using program Basin TripBit. Basin TripBit is a program created by Columbia Basin Research at the University of Washington School of Aquatic and Fisheries Sciences with funding provided by the Bonneville Power Administration. Basin TripBit is specially designed to estimate survival of juvenile salmonids from tributaries to some point downstream, such as an in-stream Pitega Ray or a dam on the main stem river. It is specially designed to estimate survival for a given cohort or brood year and accounts for variable age at migration within the population. Traditional release recapture models used on the Columbia River system to estimate survival assume from release to a detection point or from one detection point to the next that an individual fish either number one migrates down stream or number two dies. Studies of Chinook salmon and steelhead however show that some juvenile salmon and steelhead stay upstream or residualize in the tributaries for one or more years before migrating downstream. Note that in this case residualize implies temporary residents that will eventually migrate if they survive and not permanent residents. A traditional release recapture analysis that assumes all released fish migrate downstream in the release year would treat the fish that residualize as mortalities. Program base and trip it provides cohort-based survival estimates that account for the possibility of an individual fish overwintering or delaying migration for multiple years during the downstream migration process. In addition, the sample sizes for studies in the tributaries often make it difficult to obtain precise estimates of the survival-related parameters. Basin TripBit allows the user to take advantage of the fact that multiple releases may occur within the same basin and may merge downstream with some shared parameters across multiple releases. Program Basin TripBit super Proceeds program TripIt by having all the capabilities of TripIt plus the additional capability of analyzing multiple release groups simultaneously. This boosts the effective sample size of the release recapture study and allows for better estimates of the parameters of interest. Going through this video series will allow you to attain proficiency in using program base and TripIt as well as program TripIt. Program base and TripIt has the following added capabilities compared to program TripIt: one, the capacity for multiple upstream tributary releases with unique survival movement probabilities to the first detection site with the possibility of shared parameters downstream for additional precision. 2. Auxiliary downstream releases from locations that are not necessarily detection sites. 3. Different final detection sites from different years and releases. And 4. Custom biologically meaningful migration periods rather than simply using the calendar year. Today, in this first video, I will show you how to download and install program base and trip it, as well as how to create the various data files you'll need to use the program. First, we must go to the Columbia Basin Research website, which you can see here at cbr.washington.edu. There are various things you can do on our website, but for the purposes that we are here for today, you'll need to click on Tools and Models here. That's where we keep our statistical software. If you click on Tools and Models here, you can see Parameter Estimation, and under that header you can find Program Basin TripIt. Click on Program Basin TripIt, and it will bring you to the Program Basin TripIt page at cbr.washington.edu slash analysis slash app slash basin TripIt. We always list our current version right here. You can find previous versions here, but you will normally want the most current version, so click on that version, currently 1.300. Clicking on that will bring you to this page, where under Distribution, you can click on Basin TripIt 1.3.0.0 exe. Clicking on that will ready the Basin TripIt exe file for download. You'll want to save that exe to wherever you save your files, open the folder that it's in, and double click on Basin TripIt 1.3.0.0 exe. This window here often comes up when you try to run Windows X executable files these days. If you click on more info, you can bypass it and just go to the install. Click on run anyway. And you go to the setup wizard, click next. Decide where you'd like to keep the program, click next, then install. One last Windows update comes up about making changes to your PC. This program will make no major changes to your PC, so just click on yes, and finally finish. From there, you can go to the search bar and type Basin TripIt, run the program. To use Basin TripIt, you will need to load in an observation data file at the minimum, which can be loaded by clicking here on Load Observations. You also have the optional ability to load in an age data file. Both file types are in comma separated value CSV format. The detection data are required and must be loaded before any other action can be taken. Load Observations is the only user action available at startup. The Observations file contains the actual PIT tag release and detection data, and they can be obtained using either number one, 
tag us. Number two, by uploading to Dart your own tag ID list created by the user. Or number three, using the Dart query with tag file selection to create a release group on the Columbia Basin Research website at cbr.washington.edu slash dart slash query slash pit underscore basin underscore branching. Regarding the first method, if you would like to obtain your observations file through Pythagoras, their site has robust tutorials on how to do so at pythagoras.org slash support slash tutorials. Though it is probably easiest to make a tag ID list from Pythagoras and then use the Dart query explained in this video, as creating an observations file in Pythagoras could potentially require edits to the file to make it compatible with Basin TripBit. The second method requires that you upload your own tag IDs on the CBR site. You can see here that I have a text file with tag IDs from the Chihuahua River 2010-2011. It exists as simply a list of all those tag IDs without observations data attached to them. If you would like to upload your own similar tag ID list that you've created from our CBR Basin TripBit page that we visited previously, you can click here to go to cbr.washington.edu slash dart slash query slash pit tags. From here, you can go to Select Analysis Tool and Trip Pit Observation File. Choose the file you plan to use from whichever directory you are keeping it in. Select the species. If your file ID contains more than one species, it is necessary to select a single species because Basin TripIt requires only a single species. And then upload and verify tag ID file list. You'll have to wait a while for the tag list to upload and verify. After it is processed, you move to the validation and review section. From here, you can see any file line alerts in the tag file, as well as viewing your full tag file summary. You can see here that I have 20,326 viable tags and it appears that the final line was blank and will be discarded in the observation file process. If you had multiple problematic line alerts, you could either A, go into your tag file and manually delete or fix the issues and resubmit it through the process, B, move forward with your data as Dart will remove problematic tags, or C, use the Dart query to generate your observation file, which we'll go over a bit later in this video. When you are satisfied with your results, click Continue TripBit Observations file process. You will have to wait a few minutes again depending on the size of your tag file, but when it is done processing you will see this page. It includes the query specifications for your observation file, showing the version the file is optimized for, the text file it was generated from, species listed, start and end dates, number of tag IDs, etc. Note this data exists within the file itself, surrounded by pound signs, which are not read by program based in TripBit when reading the observations data. From here you can click download TripBit observations file. Save that file to wherever you save your Basin TripBit data files, and now you have your Basin TripBit observations file. Note that if I open up my observations file, you can see here the query specifications up top, same as it was presented on the CBR site when I created the file, and under that you can see our various data columns. Note that these data columns must be in this format for them to work within Basin TripBit. Please also note that if you wish to open and then save the TripBit observations file before loading it into Basin TripBit, it is recommended that you use a text editor rather than Excel in order to preserve the date format required by TripPit. If you open the CSV file in Excel, like I have done here, be sure not to save it on Exit as it recommends, or else Excel will change the date format as it is saved. Now let's look at the third method of creating your observation file via the Dart query. This method requires you to pull data from Dart within specified ranges of time and from a particular location. This method allows the user to create an observations file without having their own tag ID file. Go to cbr.washington.com edu slash dart slash query slash pit underscore basin underscore branching. From here, you can set up what data Dart pulls to create your observations file. Now with that, Dart does some assessment of life stage when creating the Basin TripIt observations file and will include juveniles only, removing adults from the observations file. First, you will see TripIt observations file queries for TripIt 1.1.22 or later or 1.1.21 or earlier. In this case, you'll always be picking 1.1.22 or later as earlier versions will not function with Basin TripIt. For this example, I will then pick data that resembles our original tag ID file. I'll pick 2010 as the starting year, Chinook, all run types, and all rear types. You can then sort a drop down list to sort release basin alpha by water body name, release basin by river kilometer, or release site. My previous tag ID file was for the Chihuahua River, so let us pick that here. I will not pick a particular capture method or tag coordinator here, but know that it is possible to single those out. If you do want to specify capture method or tag coordinator, know that you can specify only one capture method but multiple tag coordinators at a time. Since I am still mimicking my previous 
previous data file. I want two years of data, 2010 and 2011. So I will select span two years for the date range, which should automatically bump the release end up by an extra year. From there, I can choose whether or not I want strict basin river kilometers or not. With the option not checked, Dart will distinguish between basins based on the final segment of the river kilometer designation, which does not always agree with the river kilometer provided in the tagging files in Pitagus. For example, for Nason Creek in the Wenatchee River watershed, with the option checked, releases with river kilometer of 754.089 and 754.089.001 would match for Nason Creek, with strict match 754.089.001 designates Nason Creek, whereas 754.089 designates a release on the Wenatchee River. After you have sorted through your choices, you can generate tag file list. Now you can see, we have basically used Dart to pull a tag file list for us. This should be all of the tag files that meet the criteria you selected on the previous page. You can review the details of what has been created and can sort the various columns by clicking on them to sort by particular column. This would allow you to say, choose all tag files for tags released at Chiwar, or perhaps pick all fish captured by DipNet. You can select a subset of the tag files by clicking the boxes next to the tag file you want. Note that if you wish to include all tag files in your analysis, do not click select all. This may actually result in the loss of some tags because the select all method is limited to a certain number of unique tag files. To include all tag files, check none of them and proceed directly to generate trip pit observations file. Again, you will have to wait a few minutes, but when the data is done processing, you will see this page listing your query specifications for your observations file. The process from here on out is the same as when we generate the observations file from our own data. You can click on download trip pit observations file and save to wherever you keep your basin trip pit data files. Again, note that if you open the file in Excel, that saving it could distort the date data and make it incompatible with basin trip pit. It is also worth noting that the program will not run the observations file file if you have it open in Excel. Basin TripIt also allows the user to load more than one observations file at a time using the standard Windows file selection commands of control click and shift click. Because Basin TripIt is designed to estimate survival for a given cohort or brood year, it is important either that your observation file is limited to a single cohort or that you provide age data so that Basin TripIt can assign each tag in the observation file to a given cohort. If you have created your observation file using the Dart query, then it is likely that it will include fish from more than one cohort, which makes an age data file necessary. The age data may be loaded after the observations data has been loaded. Unlike the detection data, loading the age data is optional. If none is loaded, base and trip it assumes that all the observations are of a common cohort. Note that there is no website in which we can generate age data for you. The age data is something that the researcher must provide themselves if they wish to use it within base and trip it. The age data should look similar to the following, including tag ID, release year, and age, or alternatively, you can have just two columns, tag ID and brood year. You can see that format in Appendix A of the Basin Tripit Manual. Looking at the example here, Basin Tripit would consider the age 0 tag in 2010 to be the same cohort as the age 1 tag in 2011. This has been Lesson 1 on using program Basin Tripit, in which we covered the program's purpose, download and installation, and creating and loading the data files you will need to use the program. Future videos in this series will look at the parameters and models used by Basin Tripit, how to use the program once once your data is loaded and interpreting the results generated by the program. Please note that if for any reason you are having trouble with program base and trip it and these videos are not good enough, you can find the user manual at cbr.washington.edu slash analysis slash app slash base and trip it. The PDF manual is there and you can either load it into your browser as I'm doing here or you can download it to view in Adobe. If you're using program base and trip it and you have any questions or comments on that same page, you may also give us feedback via our user satisfaction survey. We would greatly appreciate any feedback you have in helping us make future versions of this program to be more helpful to our users. We hope that this video helps you get the most out of program base and trip it. Again, if you have any questions or comments in regard to the program, please fill out our survey as previously detailed. You can also contact Columbia Basin Research at web at cbr.washington.edu. Best of luck on your survival models and thank you.